Hi everyone, this is Margaret Hirsch at Home with Hirsch's and thank you for joining us on this wonderful Monday morning for our Motivational Monday and it's really talking about wellness. It's so important, you know, your health is your wealth and you only really realize that as you get older because when you see older people, they spend all the money they spent their whole life earning tr trying to keep themselves alive and have a decent life. So if you start young, when's the best time to start? Well, it was yesterday, but if you didn't start yesterday, today is the best day to start and make sure that you have a healthy body, a healthy mind, but most importantly, because so many people are getting dementia, they're getting Alzheimer's. We don't want to get there. And you've got to keep your mind going. You've got to keep your body fit. You've got to really be on top of things. So we're so happy. And welcome to Jess and Stacey from Connectable Life who are with us today. And also to Glenda who set this all up. And to all of you who've joined us on Zoom and those of you joining us on Facebook Live. So we really hope you're going to get something fantastic out of this. And we are so happy to introduce Haley. And I think, uh, Jess, you're going to introduce Haley, hey? Yeah, I'll introduce her. Haley, uh, thank you so much for coming on and go for it, Jess. Yeah, hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. We're doing something a little bit different this morning. We're talking about all things um, physiotherapy. So if anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to pop them into the chat box. But this morning we have Haley Rootman with us. Um, she is a, a dynamic physiotherapist that practices out of Schroeder and McKay Physiotherapy, which is based at the Well Center in Belito. She's been a practicing physio for 12 years and has a postgraduate specialization in advanced neuromusculoskeletal physiotherapy. Need a degree just to say that. Um, she, <laughs> she treats neuromuscular skeletal sports injuries, post-operative orthopedic conditions, um, but as well as that, she is also an enthusiastic mountain biker and um, new mom, well, not new anymore, but mom to a gorgeous 18-month-old baby. She's really mm -hmm. passionate about rehabilitation and helping patients make meaningful lifestyle and activity changes. Um, and these are obviously going to promote their health and self-sufficiency and reduce their pain and injury. Um, and in Haley's words, she says, the goal is to help patients get back to doing what they love, which makes life worth living, which I think is, yeah, so, so well said and so um, beautifully said. So Haley, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Um, I don't know if you want to start by just, yeah, telling everybody what is physio um, and how you can help us and when we should see a physiotherapist. Well, hi, thank you so much for, for having me. I'm very excited to be here and like you said, to chat to all things physio. I'm obviously very, very passionate about what I do. And um, yeah, um, so physio, we are medical practitioners. We are re rehabilitation specialists. So we normally see people when they are suffering with pain and injury. Um, uh, however, we are, I mean, we also see people who are uh, looking for maintenance or looking to improve their physical performance and condition as well um, in terms of sports people. So I think that we have been very much put in a, put in a box, put in a sphere, and I'm hoping to just open that out a little bit today. So, so just briefly going back to, to what physio is, um, like I said, uh, medical practitioners, we spent quite a while learning about the human body, about illness, uh, injury conditions, and in my case, normally, mostly about the, the neuromusculoskeletal system, which is um, your whole body. <laughs> Um, so we are first line practitioners, you don't need a referral to physiotherapy, um, and we look to, um, as you said in the introduction, get you back to what you love to do by working on improving fitness function um, to help reduce pain and disability. Okay, now tell us the difference between a chiropractor, biokineticist, and a physiotherapist. Why are there three different things? And the second part of my question is, it's such a long job, because I know my son-in-law is a biokineticist, and he went to Stonebosch for many years, and he did his honours. And I said, why don't you just carry on and be a proper doctor? And he said, well, I am a proper biokineticist. So that, that didn't go down too well. You can see I, I, it didn't go down well at all. So tell us the difference between the three and, and why you didn't carry on. And become a doctor 
Thanks, Margaret. So we all work hand in hand. Uh, we all respect each other's um, professions. I know historically there's been um, some bad mouth in between the chiros and, and the physios. However, I feel we work very well together. And at the end of the day, um, all healthcare practitioners should work together for the best of each person for their wellness. Um, so physios, we are mostly um, pain and injury, um, as I mentioned before, and rehabilitation. So we work a lot on exercise as a way to improve your, your life. Chiropractors, uh, I would obviously say come to physio because physio is wonderful. And um, yes, chiropractors, people find the treatments very effective and they mostly work on uh, manipulation and work through the spine and the nervous system to uh, affect the entire body. Um, so it depends on your what you feel works the best for you. Um, and then your biokineticist, because uh, you guys love biokineticist, um, it's, it's almost like our arms and the rest, it really completes the, the physio profession very well. So the biokineticists are um, the exercise um, specialists and usually once you are through your course of uh, physiotherapy, your injury is healed, your pain is about 80% less and you are looking to improve your strength and get back into sports or life um, and you need a bit of exercise a professional to help you, that's when you would go to the biokineticist. Now, what made you decide to be a physio? I mean, it was, when you finished school, you're obviously hell of a clever because you have to be hell of a clever to do this. <laughs> and you could have done anything. What made you, what made you think, oh, I'll let me try physio? So I really enjoyed the, the, the time to build a relationship with people. Mm -hmm. For me, that's um, one of the most important factors so I get along well with people I enjoy people and we get to spend a lot of time with them um, physio has got a huge amount of branches so I'm specialized in uh, the your, the NMS the musculoskeletal branch but there's so many options pediatrics um, neurons where you work with people with strokes and brain injuries uh, sports I mean that you can work in the hospitals uh, in the ICUs the, the list is really endless so it, you can really help people from so many different spheres now does a doctor normally refer you because I mean I wouldn't think of just say oh I'm feeling a bit I've got a pain in my neck um you know let me go to the physio I wouldn't think of doing that I would just find the chemist and say give me a pill to make this better um when would people actually come to you can they just arrive and say listen you know phone you up and say listen I need an appointment I've got a pain in my neck or a pain in my back or something like that or um I, I you know just tell us about it how do people actually find you so Margaret, you've touched on some interesting points there. Um, a few of them, I'd like to just highlight that we live in a, a society that loves the, the push of the button and taking a pill, a tablet to make things better. Um, and it's, I read such an interesting quote about the, the inconvenient truth about our convenient lifestyles is it leads to very inconvenient injuries. So. I think we are working towards quite a, a mindset shift more into your lifestyle and your wellness is more, it should be more than 80% of what you are doing. And the seeking medical care should take up about less than 20% of, of, of what you're doing um, to make yourself feel better. So anyways, not to lecture you too much there, Margaret. Um, so... <laughs> And now I've forgotten the rest of what you were asking on my... No, how, how do people come to you? What, what makes them decide, I need a physiotherapist? Of course, yes. So we are very proud of our first line practitioner status, which means that you can come, if you need physio, you come to a physio. And um, we don't need you to be referred to us from a doctor. Okay, well, um, that's... 
Fantastic. Now, okay. tell me, so when you're working with a person, you, uh, I always imagine a physio, they massage you first to see, you know, to get those knots out of the muscles. And then, of course, if you've got a real bad knots like I do in my neck from spinning uh -huh. punch the computer all the time, then they get those needles out and stick them into you. So tell us about needling and, and how that came about. Cool. The sexy part of physio. Okay. Um, so the most important part of being a first-line practitioner is that you assess the person. So we spend a long time talking to people, making sure that what we are treating is something that we can treat because there are people who come in with dangerous conditions, for instance, the neck pain after whiplash injury or back pain that actually needs to be seen by a spinal specialist. So most important is that we understand and we can make a diagnosis of your injury first and foremost. So that is the first point about being a first line practitioner. So then moving on to the massage, etc. So uh, often physios feel like glorified masseuse, uh, masseuse not to knock um, the massage therapist at all because it is, uh, people feel lovely after massage. Um, so part of being a physio is yes hands-on techniques getting a feel for muscles and joints etc um, but the rest of it is uh, looking more into what in your lifestyle is creating this neck pain and tension doing a massage is lovely for now but the effects wear off very quickly by the end of the day by the next day you're often back into your, your tightness. So we would say, listen, Margaret, you're in front of the computer all day. You need to make some changes in your life um, to prevent these sort of things from happening. Then going on to the hands-on manual treatment, um, I do firmly believe in manual therapy. It's a nice way to connect with the patient. It's a lovely way to um, show that you care um, by doing a massage, by um, creating that, that, that bond. So yes, we find tight muscle bands, we massage them, and in some cases we decide to do some needles. So dry needles are, uh, it's a sterile needle. It's a small little acupuncture, fine, fine needle that we like, uh, we like. We have great fun and joy in inserting into really painful points that uh, a muscle contraction and an ache in the muscle. Yeah. Wow, my goodness me. It's, well, uh, it's so amazing. I'm um, sorry, I'm jumping in there because I love needling. Um, and I love when I've got a, like when I, I love having it done to me because it's so sore, that area. And the minute it goes in, and I don't know, you use that technology, that vibration, and you feel that needle moving. And then it's almost like this little burst of energy and that knot or whatever it is, just like, releases it's amazing sure. like do you love to watch that little vibration and is that when you can see that it's really painful or you've hit the spot <laughs> so, so interestingly pain is it's a very subjective experience which uh, people experience very differently from person to person so um Yes, when you put a needle into a muscle and you see the reaction, most likely the muscle is going to ease off and you're going to see a, a positive response. Um, uh, it, the, the theory behind it is increasing of blood flow. Um, your brain actually reduce, uh, produces endorphins, which creates a pain relief response. So there's a, there's a huge amount of science behind the needles. Um, and interestingly enough, Somebody who's experienced a good needling session before, so they've had good pain relief before, will have an even better response the next time around. So just saying a lot of it's in your mind, in your brain. Yeah. So Jess, have you ever had needling or anything like that? I have, and I was actually going to touch on it, Margaret, you know, your question about the the process um, in terms of seeing a, a physiotherapist. I had pain for years and I had kind of just normalized the pain because I didn't feel like the schlep of doing whatever it is that I needed to do. And I didn't realize it was literally as simple as picking up the phone and 
booking that consult and going and putting the putting the needles in or whatever it is that needs to be done. And I walked out a different person and I had pain for five, six years before that. And it was just kind of, you know, looking back so unnecessary. But I think there's a part of us that kind of like normalizes pain, you know, no pain, no gain, push through the pain, you know, all these things that uh, society tells us that we tell ourselves and it kind of just becomes our new norm until eventually we really just cannot continue anymore. And we don't really want to get to, to that stage. Um, but I also just wanted to comment on the, the chiropractor, biokineticist, physio, and how well they can actually all work together. You know, we don't have to have this like huge difference between them. Um, I know my husband had a knee up and a back up and uh, six weeks between each other as well, but he still plays a lot of hockey. And um, so obviously he needs to really like do a lot of maintenance work on his knee and his back in order to still play the hockey. And he's found that what works the best is all three together. You know, if he only does the physio, he gets pain. If he only does the chiropractor, he gets pain. If he doesn't do his exercises from the back, the not biokineticist <laughs> um, he gets pain and when he is really firm about seeing the chiropractor the physio and doing his exercises at home he doesn't experience any pain and he can carry on with his his hockey like normal so I think a huge part of it is also the discipline Haley. how do you get like your patients you know you can you can say go home and do abc but how do you sort of change their mindset and get them disciplined enough to actually follow through with it rather than coming back and say, ah, oh, like what you did didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so a phenomenal point that you've uh, hit on there, Jess. And I think that's the root of any practitioner. You've got to be able to communicate with people. You've got to be able to listen to them, to identify what's important to them, why they've come to see you, and then work with them to make changes that are acceptable and that fit into their lives. Um, we have come from a, a hierarchy of doctors, medical professionals that have been, you know, and uh, unapproachable people. So we are really looking to, to, to form a better relationship with the patient and to, like I said, uh, find what works for them. So we need to know, are you a working mom? Do you, you know... You, you need to find those things that will fit into your life. So like for myself, a working mom, I don't, I, I don't want to make the time, not that I don't have the time, but my time is important in other directions. So can I do three exercises while I am, uh, while my son's in the bath that will now change my posture, which will improve my neck pain and that will make the difference going forward. Um, for, for Margaret, maybe she doesn't want to get away from her computer. Maybe the yeah. computer, exactly. So me telling her, listen, Margaret, you have to get away from that computer is not gonna change. So, so what, what changes can we make that are acceptable for her? Um, you see where I'm going with this. So yes, we give the exercises for a reason. Our advice is there for a reason, but it's the onus is also on me to make sure that it suits you okay yeah it's amazing because i mean i'm literally at this computer up to 20 hours a day seven mm -hmm. days a week so um and i do tend to hunch and i know i've got to sit back and i sit back for a while and then i hunch again but talk to mm -hmm. us now that the fashion now is the standing desk i know our um mm -hmm. our, our um what is he our executive director he went and he said oh i've got such pain here i'm going to the doctor and everything and he said he really thought like his last day had come and they said no just get a standing desk so uh, but we've got one of our our md's actually got a standing desk he stood at it for about the first two days and now he's sitting back at the desk on his normal desk again so what tell us about a standing desk and does it work they say stand so what's sitting is the new smoking is, is the same <laughs> yeah well, that is the the buzz around now um so which also is ups, upsetting in a way because we like to demonize things and there's nothing wrong with sitting there's sitting is normal slouching is normal what isn't normal is now the length of time the amount of time that we spend sitting uh whether it's sitting watching tv on your phone uh reading in front of a computer etc our bodies on our muscles are not made to sit 
in a certain position being used click 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 for such an a long a prolonged period of time doing such a small movement so that is the problem our bodies want to move they want to do big movements they want to walk and it, so that is the problem is too little we're doing too little so that my <laughs> we very often sit on a you know those physio balls that will change your back pain none of us are actually strong enough or have the endurance to sit on a ball in front of a desk at most we can sit for 10 15 minutes for the really good people and then we're back to holding ourselves up on the desk as well so a supportive chair if you're at a desk is very important and a good work setup is important um a standing desk as you ask you're just changing your posture for another static posture so whether you are sitting or standing you still want to move it is nice to have a, the option to sit and to stand to change between the two um but as you said then you you get to a point where it's actually you can't you can't stand at your desk anymore so you're back to slouching again in front of your computer so it's it's more about moving it's about taking rests it's about having your you know these all these smart watches that everybody has bing margaret it's time to breathe bing margaret it's time to twist in your chair that's what's going to make the difference okay wow well, that's that's a lot now um teresa says what's the main and biggest difference between a physio and a biokineticist so my explanation would be a physio sorts out the pain and the biokineticist get, keeps you doing exercises to make sure it doesn't come back that's how i would describe it how would you describe the biggest difference yeah so we it's hard to to draw the clear line sometimes because there are people who have long-standing pain that do need to exercise and they work well with the biokineticist and a physio but at the end of the day if you have an acute injury uh, you've got inflammation and pain go to a physio um, and then when you want to get stronger after that you head to a biokineticist well, mary jean says she fell and injured her ribs on one side and what, what do you do with a rib injury as far as i know there's not much you can do with a rib injury all they do is strap it mary jean as far as i know but then i'm not a doctor so let's ask the physio what would you do with a rib injury <laughs> sorry mary jean and uh, please understand that right here and now i can only give just broad strokes and i can't give you advice because rib injuries can be uh, they can affect your lung, you know, it depends on what happens. You can puncture a lung with a rib injury. So um, please just uh, uh, see a medical professional, come see me. <laughs> um, you're in Cape Town, go see a physio in Cape Town. Um, but if you have a broken rib that is not affecting the lung tissue or you've, you've got a strained muscle around your lung, uh, Margaret's quite right, um, strapping is a good idea, pain medication, um, and to practice some easy breathing, um, but sham ribs are awful. Yeah, and uh, tell us uh, that strapping. You know, you always see people now with those brightly colored straps on mm -hmm. their arms and things. What is what is that all about? I have no idea. So we have wonderful ranges of strapping and taping made famous by our athletes and Olympics. And it kind of feels like people head to the Olympics with a competition to have the most interesting patterns on their bodies. Um, so the jury is out. Yes, strapping is very helpful in terms of uh, if you sprained your ankle to prevent an ankle re-sprain. If you're a rugby player and you've injured your knee, to have um, strapping around the knee is very helpful to prevent another injury. Some of the time, the strapping is a pattern. It's something pretty that looks nice on you. And some of the time, it can help the muscles. Um, it's it's um, helping to make you more aware of the area, which makes you protect the area differently, um, makes it move differently, and then you feel more comfortable. Now, with COVID being around now and people it's affecting people's lungs, was there anything a physio could do to you? Because, you know, they said the ventilators didn't work. Um, so when somebody gets something like that, would you come to a physio to try and get your lungs to work? So physios actually took center stage with uh, COVID, especially in the in the beginning stages of um, the pandemic, because of um, our wonderful respiratory physiotherapists who have 
uh, wonderful techniques and ways of helping to improve lung, lung function. So getting you breathing more comfortably, giving you positions that you can feel more comfortable and relax in, um, helping to improve your oxygenation, helping to remove phlegm from your lungs. So um, physiotherapy is a, a huge part of COVID. And then also in post-COVID um, recovery, people battling with uh, cardiac um, problems, uh, fatigue, that sort of thing, to, to have a physio guide you in your rehabilitation afterwards uh, is quite important and very, very helpful. Okay, that's amazing. So Mary Jean says she saw a homeopath and, and although <laughs> um, difficult to breathe, but she used Arnica. I'm a great believer in Arnica. If anybody goes to have anything done with their teeth, I said, well, take Arnica because I saw my daughter when she went to have her wisdom teeth out. I gave her Arnica and she had nose swelling and all the other people had you know, big swollen mouth. What do you think about Arnica? Does it help? So we use Arnica oils in our practice. Um, it does have an effect on, a good effect on bruising and inflammation. Um, again, with herbal and homeopathic um, remedies, it is difficult from a medical perspective to say exactly what effect it has. So I'm really thrilled to hear that your daughter had such a great response after her, her wisdom teeth because that's a very painful one. Yeah, that's a hectic one. And mm. Jen, what do you do? You've got all those children and, and when they're always hurting themselves, what do you as a mother do um, to, to go and sort them out? I'm terrible. I just say, get up and sort yourself out. But I mean, most people are more sympathetic than that. <laughs> I think it's just attention more than anything else that they need in those moments. <laughs> um, but we are also really big fans of Arnica oil in the bath. Um, love that. And yeah. um, isn't another good one if you've uh, done a lot of, not necessarily for injury, but for like um, to relax your muscles and everything out of after sport, um, uh, uh, magnesium and Epsom, yeah, Epsom salts and magnesium. Yes. yes. So yeah. absolutely. Uh, most people for relaxation and uh, relief of muscle tension love a nice um, warm bath with Epsom salts in. Fantastic. And then magnesium is good for cramping. <laughs> and basically, with you with your children, what do you use? Our go-to for literally almost anything is ass. So yes. we just put, so if they get stung by something, if they have a fall, no matter what, they get ass. Um, I actually need to get some Annika oil. My son, um, he twisted his ankle the other day. He's at boarding school. And he said, oh, I twisted my ankle on sport today. And I thought, oh, I need to get you some Annika oil and get them to use it more and put it on because I know it is this incredible release. But uh, do you guys ever use any essential oils in your practices? No, uh, we, we don't. Um, I do hear a lot about the, the good effects um, and the what people like about the essential oils is that it's not a medical medicinal um, effect. So I can't tell you too much about the essential oils, but what I love to chat about is that ice that you use. That's really a, a great um, first go-to for pain and injury is to pop some ice on uh, to just help settle pain and inflammation. So well done. <laughs> Very good call. That's our absolute go-to. Like if they get stung, like it's the most amazing uh, release for a sting. It's incredible. I, I love Brenda's one. She said, my go-to is Zambuck. Good old Zambuck or a bag of frozen peas. That's, that's <laughs> Zambuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, all these amazing things that people use well that, that was incredible and yeah we really know now so much more about physio and what's going on and and, and who to use and what to use so Haley, thank you so much for being on our show today okay. and um, so next week we have got somebody doing brain gym um i'm just looking for that name again oh here we are Andrea Reem, she's doing Brain Gym with us. So join us next Monday again at 11 o'clock. Um, and we'll be talking again about wellness. Your wellness is what we're all about. We just want you to feel good, feel healthy, feel happy, and make every day your best day. So Stacey and Jess, thank you so much for being on the show today. Hayley, thank you so much for joining us. We really love chatting to you. 
and we wish you all a fantastic week and we just thank you for all the good work that you all do with all the different people and wish you all the best have a fabulous week and to all our listeners and people who have joined us on zoom see you next week at 11 o'clock thank you girls. wonderful thank you margaret thank you thank Hayley. You, Hayley. Thanks, thanks bye bye, bye. bye.